Hi, I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. Today we're here to look at the 2019 PSE Carbon Stealth 35. Now 35 means 35 inches from axle to axle. In 2018 PSE dropped the 35 inch, which was actually 34 inch in 27 to 2017, the Carbon Air, and they only produced a 33 inch. Now in my opinion that was a mistake. The 35 fitted into a nice little bracket, ideal for the 3D archer, target archer or even hunter. 35 inches is a really nice common size for those types of archers. So it's suitable for hunting, 3D, target archery, someone looking for a little bit longer bow. Now the carbon stealth is light, it's a carbon frame riser. Now when you hear about carbon frame risers you're going to think Hoyt, the RX1 and all that sort of stuff. Now the problem with the Hoyt and the other carbon bows on the thing market is they're not particularly light. The Hoyt weighs about 4.1 from memory. It's an aluminium tube design and they wrap carbon around it. And in fact with the Hoyt, a large percentage of it is still, still machined at the top end here. So that's all machined from that bracket down to there. So the bow itself is not particularly light. So the advantage of carbon riser in most carbon bows is basically taken away. What you want from a carbon bow is something nice and light, not affected by heat, that absorbs shock and vibration that is super strong. Now PSE, I'm, I sound like I'm doing a sales pitch here, they say that this carbon riser is 10 times stronger than the equivalent of Voke riser, which is a machine riser. So with the PSE they produce this evolved cam system, I'm going to talk a little bit about this. So it's a twin cam, so the top and bottom wheel is identical. It has a yoke here that unravels as you pull it back to keep the cams aligned. Now each limb on the PSE is a different poundage to stop cam lean, so it stops your cam tilting. Now this evolved cam system, PSE now use it on most of the bows in the PSE range. It enables you to adjust draw length by, by loosening those two screws there and there and just rotating this module to change the draw length. So on the on the Carbon Stealth 35 this bow is adjustable from 25 to 30.5 inches in draw length just through rotating, rotating the module. You do not need a bow press to do that, you just rotate it. Now you can adjust the lead off by adjusting that little screw there and moving this forward. Now at the moment this is set on 90% let off, I'm just checking, 90%. And by moving this little bracket here forward, you can adjust it to 80%. Now the big ben benefit of the Evolve Cam system, if you don't want a 90% let off bow, let's say you want a 65% let off bow, you want more holding weight, let's say you're a target shooter and you want more holding weight, you can just go and buy yourself the low let off modules. So you're a hunter and you want a bow which is faster than this. So let's say you shoot 3D and you want a bow which is faster, you can just go and buy yourself the fast modules. Now those modules are going to cost you, you know, let's say $120 for a set. I think in America they retail for around $80 US. Um, but it changes the entire feel of the bow through one module, still giving you the flexibility of changing draw length. Now with bows, bows from other manufacturers, and let's just run through some of the manufacturers, um, Elite, you need to buy them each module for each draw length. So let's say you're 28.5 and you want to try 29, you have to buy a module. And with the Elite bows, you need to put on a bow press and take the strings and cables off. With the PSE, that's not the case, it's just a simple ro um, rotation. Now with the Hoyt, Hoyt now feature rotation also in the modules, but it doesn't allow you to adjust let off and doesn't allow you to adjust the whole feel of the bow, bow through, through purchasing new modules. So to me, this is a really beneficial system. Um, if you want me to run through some other bow companies, Matthews, you can buy individual modules to change let off and draw length, but you've got to buy each individual module. Um, other bow companies, Obsession for 2019 has obviously got now modules to change draw length, which is a big plus, but still not the flexibility and the functionality of the PSE rotating module system. Now Baird do have a rotating module system, but it doesn't enable this level of function, this ability of this ability to adjust the function of the bow from a high let off bow to a low let off bow, from a smooth shooting bow to a fast shooting bow. This functionality is unique to PSE. So I really like the Evolve system. They're using this in their target bows, they're using this in their hunting bows. 
it's a nice system they have two size cams they have a large cam and a small cam so the cam system is is, defi is defined by this code on the side here um, and the module also has a code just on the side all PSC parts have codes to make it easy if you need to reorder um, so let's just take a quick look at this they've got a flexible cable guard so as you you can see the shape of this cable guard here as you draw this bow back this will flex reducing um, torque on the cams so reducing the chances of cam, cam torque you have a string stop down the bottom here which is all carbon now in this version of the stealth you've got no lower spot for a stabilizer so if you're going to want to fit a front and rear stabilizer it's going to be mounted off the front here it would be obviously better to have a low, lower mount bolt on the back here somewhere for a, to fit a lower um, spot but I assume they don't do that for strength um, the carbon the stealth does not allow you to fit a two-piece quiver you can see PSC have done away with the concept of a two-piece quiver on their carbon riser so if you want to fit a quiver it's going to be a one-piece quiver to the site here um, PSC do offer the variable positions here for sites which is fairly standard on all the PSCs now in the old version of the PSC stealth there was a problem with the QAD rest fitting on that spot there there wasn't enough gap I don't know if that's fixed in 2019 I haven't checked um, but if you are wanting to fit a QAD to a stealth make sure it fits first ask the dealer um, so the 35 I think it's great it's come back um, it's nice and strong the carbon riser design is light so let's just check the weight of this bow so I mentioned that Hoyt use a aluminium core PSE use a foam core so it's foam then covered with carbon now Win and Win have also had a carbon had a carbon bow and now that was pure carbon so it actually wasn't particularly light now so the weight of this bow with everything on it is four pounds so that's with the sight whisker biscuit um, so I assume this is about 3.7 I'm guessing but it's nice and light um, so the, the stealth 35 is one of my most favorite bows in the lineup um, and the reason it's one of my favorites is because it's nice and light it features the evolve cam system which is easy to shoot a nice draw system um, and I like the carbon because it's not going to get hot or cold with the evoke it's significantly a heavier bow than this bow the evoke itself which is a 35 inch bow as well um, I think is about 4.5 pounds so about half a pound a bit more over half a pound lot heavier than the stealth so I really like this I like the idea of a light riser because if you want to add weight to the stabilizers you're going to create a more steady bow and you'll see with my target set I'm, I'm shooting at the moment I'm shooting the PSE focus it's actually a bit lighter than the perform so I can add more weight to the front of the stabilizers and the balance is a little bit different so I can add even more weight to the front of the stabilizers to achieve the same weight as the perform but I get more stability um, with the focus than the perform because I've got this massive weight at the front with the stealth it's the same deal if you're looking for a target shooting bow or a 3d shooting bow you can add the weight to the stabilizers to to increase your stability instead of adding, adding the weight to the riser so i really like that feature now the overall finish of the bow is good i like the little transfers the little psc logos the stealth logo there looks nice psc now serve the cables which is really really good not a fan of these limb dampeners i wish PC would get rid of them there's got it you know obsession to have a great limb limb dampening system um i find these move and not a great fan of them i mean they do work but i just they should be bigger and they should be down here and kind of more chunky to stop them moving the limb work on the graphics is nice um really like that um now I want to talk about the wedge lock system here there's been lots of confusion about the wedge lock system that's this here now what happens in the wedge lock system is on the side here you've got these little bolts and what these bolts do is they clamp this machined limb pocket into the into the limbs here 
So they clamp in here. What the wedge lock system does, it, it's a little wedge and it pushes these limbs out. So they get pushed out there into the side pockets here. And this here is pushing in to lock the limbs in place. Now, if you adjust the poundage of this bow, you do not adjust the wedge lock system. The only time you adjust, adjust the wedge lock system is if you're going to replace these limbs. In which if you're going to replace the limbs, you need to loosen the wedge lock systems. After it's been in a bow press and you pull the strings and cables off, you loosen the wedge lock system and you loosen it on the side here. Because on the side, you've got these little plastic dimples. If you don't do that, you're probably going to break those little dimples. Um, that's the only time when you adjust the wedge lock system. Now, I'm going to say this is a... This is one of the first PSE Stealth 35s to come in. I'm going to say both of the wedge lock systems were loose from the factory. And to me, that's not acceptable, especially on this level bow. I'm, I'm sure it was a mistake from whoever put the bow together, um, but they were both loose and both very significantly loose. So I'm not sure why that occurred, but in the checkoff process um, that should have been picked up I'm just checking if there's a signature on this on this birth certificate here the birth certificate tells you the all the specs about the bow the serial number but that was a bit disappointing to me that was the only defect I found in this overall build of this bow um, so with that we're going to shoot we're going to shoot this bow through a chronograph and see what it feels like um, then we're going to shoot the bow at 18 meters and see how it groups okay so this is a 70 pound bow which i've wound down to 59.8 pounds because i test all the bows at 60 pounds at 29 inches now the ibo speed on this bow is 335 now i'm not sure if that's 335 with fast modules or the high let off modules the fast modules will, will add an extra 10 feet per second to the bow so bear that in mind so now I'm not shooting IBO specs. IBO specs is 70 pounds, 30 inches with a very light arrow. I'm shooting 60 pounds, 29 inches with a gold tip velocity, 400 spined arrow with a 90 grain point. I think this arrow weighs 327 grains. Um, it's the same arrows I use on all my tests. Um, now the fast bows will shoot about 310, um, a little bit over that for something like a full throttle on the Expedite. This I'd be expecting around 300 feet per second with a 330 feet per set with a 335 feet per second bow, but if the 335 is set with the fast module, then I'm going to be closer to 290. So just bear that in mind. Okay, first thing, the balance of the bow. The balance of this bow is perfect. You can see it just sits in my hand. My hand's open. It just sits there, straight upright. It's it's really really nice. The grip itself is. I'm going to say it's not too narrow, not too wide. It feels comfortable. Um, it's it's wider than a lot of bows, but not as wide as some, if that makes any sense. The grip here is flat, so when I've tested a Hoyt, it dug into my thumb. There's no spot here for it to dig into my thumb. The grip itself feels comfortable, and just on the grip, I want to talk about grips. Your hand should be sitting like this, knuckles at 45 degrees and nothing touching. The reason for that is you don't want to torque the bow. If you grab the bow like such and you pull it back and do this sort of thing, you're going to pull the string straight off the cam, derail the bow and blame the bow for that. And it's going to be absolutely you when you derail the bow. So I try and mention it, but I still get one or two derails a week or every two weeks. So. So let's just go through the draw process. Now, if ever you're going to draw back your bow, make sure you've got an arrow in the bow because if you press that trigger um, and the bow goes off or the D-loop breaks, you're going to blow up the bow. So always have an arrow in the bow and draw the bow safely. So first off, we're just going to check out the draw cycle of this bow. So it starts off pretty solid, very solid. And it's dropping now, dropping, dropping, drops off into a, quite a big valley. Now back here, the wall is dead solid. I'm going to let this thing down. Now it doesn't want to go here. It's like I've almost got to push it forward to set the thing off. My God. It doesn't want to go. I'm going to shoot the shot. That's pretty quick. That's pretty quick. 297. Um, I'm pretty happy with that speed. The draw cycle, like I said, when you get back there, you feel like you're holding three pounds. 
So you've got to kind of push it down. It doesn't want to let down. The draw cycle I would define as one of the easiest draw cycles. Um, the bows I've tested recently have been the elites. They drop off much sharper. Um, so they kind of build up, then drop off. This starts dropping off. It starts dropping off and then suddenly drops off. So the drop off is much smoother than the elite, um, than the Hoyt. The Hoyt drops off very rapid. So a much smoother draw cycle. Um, now the shot itself, I felt no vibration with the tool. The shot sounded really quiet. So let's just shoot another one. Let's check, check the speed on that. So the draw cycle now, 60 pounds. This feels like about a 55 pound bow. You can see with the bow, 295, you can see the bow barely moves in my hand. It's literally fantastic. Now I said about, I said about some other bows. I'm trying to think what I said, but this bow feels easy to draw. It's, the draw cycle's easier. It's not hurting my shoulder at all. Um, now I shoot 60 pounds with my target bow and some 60s are hard and some 60s are easy. This is such a six, easy 60 pound bow. And it's just, it's just simple. It's just like there's a, it's just, yeah, it's just easy. Now what I noticed as well, and that was a 296, so a 296, 297. What I noticed with, especially when I shot the Elite bow, is when I drew it back, because I hit that rapid valley, my sight pin moved around. I'm getting less sight pin movement with this because it's a little bit softer in the draw cycle. Um, so basically it draws back. I'm still aiming at a target. It's a lot softer in the, in the shake. When you pull it back, I'm getting very little shake. So I'm aiming basically straight away. So I think I'm going to shoot pretty well with this bow at 18 meters. The shock's great for a you know, relatively fast bow. I'd probably like to fit faster modules to it to increase that speed and you know, push it up to a 310 um, and have the benefit of a carbon bow with a fast bow. So I'd, I would like to test that out as, a, as an option. But this just feels, it feels great. It really does. It's feels really, really good. So with that, let's take this back to 18 and see how it goes. Now I have sighted this bow in at 18. I have hit the center once. Um, but my groups were outstanding. Now, when I shot the Drive 3D, 3B in practice, my groups were appalling, but when I actually shot the video, my grouping was excellent. So I'm hoping I get an excellent group with this. But I did Robin Hood an arrow in practice. I only shot a couple of shots, but I Robin Hooded at 18 meters the arrow. And just, for, just to prove. Now that's with, that's the knock there. You can see the pins kind of push its way out. Now that was at 18 meters with five pin sight, a little whisker biscuit rest, no peep sight, just a little pink D loop here. Um, yeah, so my group was high and it was to the, to the right when I Robin Hooded the arrow, but it shot just really well. So I'm hoping in practice, because I don't do second takes and third takes to make this thing look like it shoots well. I just shoot it and hope it shoots well. So I'm hoping it does shoot well. <laughs> I did a shoot down review and it was appalling my groups. Now I've gone back and look at it. I'm like, oh, that's terrible. But I think this will shoot really well because it's got good balance. It's an easy draw cycle. So my theory is on grouping that you want the bow to be smooth to draw. You want the bow to be well balanced and then you're going to shoot okay. So you want to be steady when you're taking that shot. And I think this bow has all the characteristics to shoot really, really well at 18 with no stabilizers on the bow. So let's go and test it. Okay, so we're back at 18 meters. Um, we're ready to try this thing out. Now in my shop, I allow people to try different bows out and have a shot and see what they think. Now I had a person shoot this bow the other day and he came out, and came in and compared the Hoyt R Redworks to this bow, which is the same sort of price point. The Hoyt's a little bit more expensive, but it, you could argue it looks better and that's just personal opinion whether you think this looks cool or not cool. Um, and I always ask people, what do you think? Because I'm interested to see what my opinion is compared to theirs on the way the bow is. 
Now he was all set to buy the Hoyt. He really was. He came in and he said, look, he shoots a PSE at the moment. And he said, look, I'm all keen to buy the Hoyt Redworks. I hear, I've seen all the reports from everyone. This is the boat I have. So he goes out and shoots it. Oh yeah, that's pretty good. He said, can I have a shot with the PSE? Yep, sure, off he goes. I come back and goes, what do you say? <laughs> what do you think? He goes, oh, he said, it's just, he said, there's no competition, is there? I went, like this stuff, you know, you go and try the different bows and see what you think. I mean, he said to me, he said, the PSE is much easier to draw, um, which I agree with. Um, so he liked that. He liked the grip better on the PSE. Um, he just said, look, there's no comparison. He said he thinks he was just a Hoyt fanboy um, from watching videos and people shooting Hoyts, which I thought was interesting. Now let's shoot some shots and see if he can be a PSE fanboy. Now this pin is just holding dead center on the target. There was a little bit of wind on that shot, but it was pretty good and it's just literally holding on the 10. I don't know where the arrow went because I can't see, but it's holding dead on the center. So I'm really happy with that. Now the other thing I'm gonna say in comparing these bows, the Hoyt to this. Now the Hoyt's got a slightly different cam system. They've got a yoke up the top and a different system down the bottom. So it's a yoke on one side and then a yoke off the cam on off the other wheel. And this is from memory. So I sold one the other day, literally last week. Guy came in and he was actually shooting a PSE. He was actually shooting the older model of this and he wanted the new Hoyt because he'd heard it'd been good. Um, so he came in to buy it. Um, so he put down his money and the bow arrived and he purchased it and traded in the PSE. He went and shot it. I think he was left-handed, I think. There was some reason why he hadn't shot the Hoyt, but anyway, when he shot, he was like, oh. <laughs> now, the other thing we noticed with the Hoyt, comparing both bows, to get the timing perfect on both wheels where they hit the draw stop, it was literally half a turn on the cables to make it spot on. So it took us probably about 20 minutes to time the Hoyt out of the factory to get the to get the draw stops to hit at the same moment. And it was literally, we twist the cables by three three turns, test it, turn the cables by two turns, test it, and it got to half a turn until they were spot on. And I think that's because that drop off is so severe, it's over such a short period, you've just got to be so spot on. My poodle. Now with the PSE, the Evolve systems, I have never had to re-time a PSE Evolve cam system, ever. I'm pretty sure that I can recall. But with the Hoyts, I generally have to time, which is really weird because the cables should have no stretch and they should be timed from the factory. And the PSE should be timed because it's the last step. So the person builds the bow and there's another person at the end who times them um, so they put them in another bow press and they time them each um, thing to make sure the cams are in time. So the guy with his Hoyt, who brought the Hoyt, you know, spent two thousand one hundred dollars on the Hoyt. He was like, why does this have to happen? Why does this have to happen from the factory? Why can't they have it the bow timed? And I was like, look, it's just the way it is. You know, it's, it's half a turn difference to get those cams to be spot on. And that's what you've got to do, which is why you need a bow press. So if you're buying a Hoyt straight from the factory and you don't have the access to a shop and you don't have the access to a bow press and those cams aren't rolling over together, it's going to, not going to feel real good. Now I can tell straight away this bow is hitting at the same time, top and bottom, like there should be. I haven't tested this bow by the way, I've just pulled it straight out of the box today. Now 
Now I'll tell you what the PC also changed. They changed the size of this axle here. They've made it wider because in the old models of the PSEs you get a little bit of this where these camp where these limbs look like that pushing down like that look like they're forming a V whether they weren't where or weren't I don't know but they definitely look like they were forming a V so PSE have gone for these wider axles you'll see it on the performs now you'll see it on the shoot downs you'll see it on the focuses this wider axle and I think that's a good thing so what you want is a little change every year just to make the bow a little bit better I've got a file. I've, I actually sell quite a few carbon airs, and I think I sell them, or carbon stealths, I think I sell them purely on the physical weight. Now, the bow is expensive at $2,000, but if you've got a lot of money um, and you've got a good job, then you're like, well, look, show me the best bow you've got in your shop, and this is one of the ones you look at because it's lighter than the Evoke. It's got the Evolve cam system, which is arguably one of the best cam systems on the market. And it's just light. And I've got a father and son who both have the same bow. They both have one of these bows. And they go, they were shooting every Saturday morning together. They'd go and shoot a couple of rounds together. And they've just both had the top of the range bows. Now they've had those bows now for about two years. I see them in my shop probably every two, three weeks. And they've still got that bow and it's still a good bow. And that's why you buy the top of the range. So you don't have that whole thing about, oh, do I buy this bow? Do I upgrade? Do I upgrade? Do I upgrade? It's a good bow. You just, you're done with it. Now I remember when PSE first produced the Carbon Air, they had a hybrid cam system on the bow. And the following year they came out, I think with the Evolve cam system. And lots of people said, is it worth changing? Is it worth upgrading to the new model? Now my view was no, because the difference was minor between the cams. But the people at PSE um, said, yeah, look, it's such a big improvement. Look, even the cheap bows shoot well. Even the PSE Stinger shoots well, the Drive shoots well, the, the cheaper bows shoot well. So you only upgrade if you want to. Um, so if I had last year's um, Carbon Stealth 33 inches or I had the year before Carbon Air at 34 inches, do I need to buy this bow? Absolutely not. Um, Look, this is a nice bow to shoot. There's no vibration. You can hear it's really quiet. It's a nice draw cycle. Look, I've even got a... What's one of my older PSEs I've got in, inside? I think it's an evolution, the evolution, which is basically about 10 years old now. It's a machine riser, same sort of wheels, a hybrid cam system, big cams. Beautiful bow to shoot, like really, really nice. There's no need for me to shoot one of these new bows. That bow will shoot perfectly fine. It's 10 years old, never let me down. It's a great bow, but you buy the new bow because you want to. That's the only reason you, Look, if you want to tell your partner that you need to buy the new bow, well, I can give you a whole lot of lines, like the bow's lighter, it's a new cam system, enables more functionality, enables me to have a 3D bow, a target bow, and a hunting bow all in one, just through changing the modules. How good is that? Look, if you want to tell your partner this thing to justify a $2,000 spend, go for it. I don't have to. Literally, I'll just buy this bow because I want one. It's just cool. It's just a cool bow. Now, it's a cool bow. It's probably not going not to win you any brownie points at home with the partner. So probably best to use the other lines. Um, or probably just best to go and buy her something really nice.
but this thing shoots great. I love it. I really do. Don't love the price point. I really don't love the price point. But I acknowledge the amount of work PSE put into this bow, the amount of research and technology which has gone in to build this bow. And I acknowledge PSE will probably never recoup those costs um, in the amount of bows they ever make. But it's cool. It's a cool bow to shoot. It's nice and light. It's just nice. I, I really do like this bow. So there are the things I would like to see improved on this. I would like to see a rear stabilizer mount in the back. I don't know if it's possible or not possible. I'd obviously like the option for a two-piece quiver. I don't know if that's possible. Um, I would probably like a little chart to show what's, what letter each draw length is on the bow because my staff suffer from that they go well we don't know what what draw length f is versus h is i get asked that question so many times every day um, look i don't know how these arrows are going down the end but they feel really good I'm not getting any wobble or shake or vibration in the shot at all. It just feels rock solid. It feels much easier than my target bow to shoot purely because this bow is light. I just love it. I really do. Um, PSE warranty and service. This bow comes in black, comes in mossy oak, it comes in cryptic. They're a film dip process, so it's a film which goes around the carbon riser. Um, PSE service um, and supply to me is the best in the industry. Um, I'm not saying that because I'm a PSE dealer. I mean, from the time you place an order, they can give you a time frame to see when the bow will be made. They, tell, they can even tell you what parts they're missing if you want to hassle them. I don't like hassling companies to that level. I generally say look, it's, generally, it's generally four to six weeks for them to make a bow. Sometimes it's in stock and it arrives in two weeks in my shop. And then I'm just four weeks ahead of what I estimated. Um, I can say it's almost rare that a bow is over six weeks wait from PSE and that's basically four weeks in America. Spare parts from PSE, the best in the industry if you've got an old PSE and you need a cam for it. They, I mean, it's got to be made because they don't have these things in stock. But they do make it. It's just, it's just really, really good. You know, I've been selling bows forever. When I say forever, I'm, I'm 48. I've been selling bows since I was 16. This is the best company I've ever dealt with. I mean, my sales staff at PSE are excellent. And good sales staff is key to a business running because when you place the order and they put the order together, they keep you updated and let you know when stuff's flowing. Um, they keep you updated on your warranty parts. It's just such a key for a successful business. Otherwise, if you're selling a product where you're having trouble getting these parts or things are slow, you get crucified by the customers. So for me, that's really, really important to my overall business and the success of my business. Um, now, as a consumer, you might go, well, that doesn't affect me. Well, it does if you break stuff. It affects you in a big, big way if you break stuff and you can't get the parts. And there is a whole bunch of bow manufacturers out there that you're going to struggle to get parts for. So, and PSE, even if you've got old product, it's still pretty easy to get parts for. So... Um, that's one reason why I'm a big fan of the PC range. I think the price is good. Um, I love the functionality in the modules. 
um, and they just shoot great so let's go and see where those are okay so I'm up here at the target and this is my group which you can obviously see where I shot now I've got a tight group up the top here where I can get my fingers around I've got a couple of arrows low which basically stop me getting my hand around it but that's a pretty tight group for a hunting sort of setup um, really these two low are probably the problem all the rest are if I had my sights down just a little bit lower that would be a pretty tight group and once again I'm going to go through that whole thing this is a basic setup this is a basic five pin sight with a whisker biscuit I'm going to get clubs I get so much from club coaches saying you can't shoot a whisker biscuit you can't shoot a five pin sight because you're not going to shoot very well I mean that is an awesome little group right there now obviously a target sight is going to be easier to adjust than a five pin sight I'm going to argue the difference between a drop away rest or a blade rest and a whisker biscuit but for a beginner whisker biscuits are just so simple they arrow sits on the rest it's just it's foolproof um, with a blade rest and kids are struggling to pull the bow back their arrow will fall off and they'll get frustrated look if you can shoot that with just a basic bow you're going to be happy all day long and that's when you can then add stabilizers add target sights add blade rests make you know add a peep sight peep sight again is going to improve your scores out of sight compared to all those other things i just mentioned so overall i think that bow shoots really really well um i would like to obviously experiment with the low let off modules which is what i normally shoot for target to create more back tension in my shot um and i like to experiment with the fast modules for like 3d and stuff because to me this bow has got nice it's structurally a good bow and which is going to shoot well i would just like a little bit more speed for 3d archery um, so for me 3d i'd be chucking on the fast modules for target i'd be <laughs> setting up the low let off modules and for hunting i'd be shooting the high let off modules which 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 is what comes with this bow now your question is going to be can i buy this bow with a with the low let off modules or the fast modules you've got to buy it with how it comes from the factory and then you've got to buy the module separate um but overall real this is this is one of my favorite bows um of any bow i've tested because of the weight because of the evolve cam system the functionality of it that makes this bow one of my favorites bows i've tested to date no shock no vibration good speeds through the chronograph you can see it's just nice balance no vibration quiet to me this is just one of the ultimate bows on the market I'm Stephen Hand from Archery Supplies. The more you shoot, the better you'll shoot. And when it's a nice day like today, just get out there and shoot some arrows because it'll make you feel better and hopefully you'll shoot better scores. Thanks for watching. Bye.